In the final lesson of this chapter, we're going to look at the perform mode, which is the part that allows you to connect into another lighting desk, listen to ArtNet or streaming ACN signals, uh, be able to uh, create your full working visualization of your production that a lighting operator and designer could use to program their show. Uh, what I'm going to talk about specifically in this lesson is just some of my tricks about how I actually run a session uh, for lighting visualization. There's little things you can do, such as setting up a second monitor, which can be useful for a designer who wants to have a full view, but you still want to have access to the CAD mode, so you can make changes. Uh, little things that I used to do just to make my life easier and that of the lighting designer when I was working with them. And in lesson 13, we're going to go into live mode. So let's just click on live, take it straight there. A live view is where the business end of WYSIWYG happens. This is where they really make their money. Uh, people simulating lighting from a lighting desk. Uh, so straight away we get some you know, information that's slightly different from anywhere else. We get no connected devices because we have, haven't connected to a lighting desk yet. Uh, we're going to cover that later in, uh, in chapter seven. I can go to quad mode. Let's just do that to start with. It works just like the CAD mode and design mode. I can see front view, or sorry, side view, front view, and top view, and the perspective view there with our lights. Now, there's very little I can really explain to you about actually patching stuff and, light and, and connecting it to a lighting desk, but basically anything that is simulated from the lighting desk you will see in any of these windows. So here we have a uh, perspective view, so the light would, would turn on and we can move it around and we'll see a nice simulated beam. On this one we'd see a, a wireframe CAD style beam landing. If you have a gobo you'll see an outline of that gobo as a, as a CAD drawing. Uh, and that will move around in all of these three views and you'll see the extent of the beam which is quite handy so you can sort of plan you know plan your shots out so you can see you know, does it clip a border or you know will it reach over the front of the stage so these are quite handy views uh, one thing i want to show straight away is the ability to pop out views if you're like me and you work with more than one screen i quite like to move you know that onto a different screen so if i right click in that window i get open in pop-up frame and I get a little pop-up, which I can move around, I can make it bigger, and you won't see this, but I can drag it out onto another screen, bring it back again. And I've got three screens, so I can go that way as well. So you might be that you have a, a projector or, or a TV screen that you're using for the LD. You might just drag that over, and then they can use that to see a nice full-sized visualization like that, with nothing in their way, none of the menus. Anything you do on the other windows will affect this one. You'll see it move. You have to move it around in here. You know, if I if I make this smaller again, as I move this around, it doesn't behave the same way as this one. I've got two cameras now, one camera there, another camera there. But if I make a change to the lights in CAD mode, if I try to focus that light up, it will move in all of them because it's referencing the same uh, 3D model. So that's quite handy, and it's also quite handy to know you can do that to any of these. You can open up a a section view as well. So I sometimes have have both of these up. Uh, I might have a, uh, a section view next to a perspective view so we can see if the beams are making it over borders or under borders. I also want to show you view options just because we're covering the overview. If you right click and rather than going to properties where we've been going quite a lot you go to view options. In here you've got simulation, performance and visual effects. These are places where you can change how something looks and we can change the ambient light to make it darker or lighter so it's just the generic lighting over everything and we can change the quality of the um the beam themselves so we can move that up to quality rather than performance i'm going to go through this in more detail later so i'll explain what volumetric and enhanced is and we can change how the beams look so i tend to like to have my uh, lens flare down my footprint quite high and the beam sort of in the middle uh, i'm going to go through all these a lot later on. But the reason I'm showing you now is because I want to show you background colour. Now we talked about background colour with reference to the CAD view, view and I said I don't like blue as a background, I prefer black. Well the exception for me is when I'm in perspective view. I quite like to have either a dark grey or a dark blue as my background. Uh, I'll show you why. If I click OK now, make that slightly lighter grey. When I move my lights I can still see them in the, in the distance because black and black doesn't work very well. If I change that back to black, those lights just disappear. It's impossible to know what's what. So I actually usually have things on blue. And it's pretty hideous to look at. 
But in theory, if you've designed your 3D model well, you shouldn't ever see any blue. If you can see blue, then something's gone wrong. You're basically seeing through your venue. So I put an entire venue in, I build all of my scenery. If I'm able to see blue somewhere, then that means I've got a masking issue. Um, so the designer should never have to see the blue. It's just my world where I'm working, and it's really easy to see what's what, what's in the way, and make sure that everything fits nicely and nothing's obscured. So we're going to cover live view in a lot of detail later on once we actually build something we can connect to a lighting desk. But for now, that's just a little overview of the live view. That also takes us to the end of chapter two. Uh, in chapter three, we're going to cover uh, from lessons 14 to 21, uh, details about the drawing system and CAD mode. So we can go through CAD mode in a lot of detail, um, drawing objects, merging 3D files, putting in uh, uh, objects in the library, manipulating things, using the tools and edit menu, um, drawings of lines and splines and shapes, um, and, uh, and then after that we move on to, on to lights in chapter four. So that's just a little taste of what's to come.